Malware was found in the Arch user repositories related to browser packages, including packages for LibreWolf, Firefox, and Zen Browser, all by a user that's currently known as Danik Pappas. The malware on each package build pulled scripts in from a GitHub repo and would run them during the build install process of the package. The code carried something called Chaos, Remote Access Trojan, or RAT for short. So Chaos RAT, quite the name there. But the scary part is that this Trojan is capable of reverse shells, executing commands, and even harvesting data, which are all scary things that seemingly could get installed on your computer, all by simply trusting a user from the AUR. Now, while the AUR remains very safe, as most people don't have the intentions of hacking you, and the packages are actually monitored quite well, this is not the first time that this has occurred where malware has showed up in the AUR. For those of you wondering what the AUR is, we're gonna get back to exactly what packages were affected. Just know if you downloaded one of these three packages from the AUR, you have been affected. So LibreWolf Fix Bin, Firefox Patch Bin, and Zen Browser Patched Bin. Anyways, we'll get to that in a moment, but let's talk about the AUR. The AUR, known as the Arch User Repository, is a community-driven repository for Arch Linux users specifically. Now, others can actually access the AUR if you have Arch Linux builds, or if you have Pac-Man installed, but this is an awesome, really crowdsourced, community-driven app store for Linux users. These apps are actually built from source, and you can read and edit every line of code that's installed, which is awesome. It gives you freedom and control. There's massive amounts of software availability here, thousands and thousands of packages beyond just the official Arch repositories, and it covers niche, bleeding edge, and proprietary projects. So it makes it an amazing repository for users but it has to be used with caution. Again, since anyone can upload, there's always a risk of malicious code or bad scripts, just like in this case that we're gonna see in a moment. And we're gonna also talk about how to make sure that there is not malware in your packages for the future use. Anyway, the AUR has some general archives as well about news and things that they've talked about in previous years which is why we can look at previous malware attempts from bad actors. But I want to get back to the one that just occurred. On the 16th of July, so as I'm making this about four days ago, at around 8 p.m., UTC plus two, a malicious AUR package was uploaded to the AUR. Two other malicious packages were uploaded by the same user a few hours later. These packages were installing a script coming from the same GitHub repository that was identified as a remote access Trojan or RAT for short. We already talked about the malicious packages that are affected, LibreWolf Fix Bin, Firefox Patch Bin, and Zen Browser Patched Bin. The Arch Linux team addressed the issues as soon as they became aware of the situation. As of today, 18th of July at around 6 p.m. UTC plus two, the offending packages have been deleted from the AUR. We strongly encourage users that may have installed one of these packages to remove them from their system and take the necessary measures in order to ensure that they're not compromised. Now it's easy to say, just take some steps to make sure that you're not compromised. But the first thing you need to start out, if you think you downloaded one of these three, or I would just go the extra step, if you had anything from the AUR, from LibreWolf, Firefox, or Zen, and you're not even sure if you downloaded these malicious packages as they could be dependent on other things, well, just remove any packages that may have to do with these three that are from the AUR, which you can do with Pac-Man by doing sudo pacman-rns, and then the package name, for example, this package, this package, or this. Next, check for residual files or backdoors. Any files outside of the user folder, look in your cron and system D, start up in init's, just in case there's something that's actually running in the background at a periodic schedule. Usually you'll find things hidden in cron jobs or system D config files. And finally, look at shell access. You can check out what ports are currently being used with things like netstat if you have it installed or lsof, but you can do something like sudo netstat and then do dash t u l p n and if you see any ports spit out for example connections on ports like 22 or 23 9000 random ones 4433 3, 3, whatever start questioning why because it's quite possible someone has infected computer regardless if you are uncertain and you're suspicious just start with a clean slate. Get the files that you need off that computer. Hopefully you have a backup and you don't even have to touch those and start with a clean slate, reinstall the whole entire operating. Of course, change any passwords that you may have tied to that computer as well. Oh, and before when I said RNS with Pac-Man, 
R is gonna remove the specified package. N is actually the no save command, which removes any backup configuration files that would otherwise be preserved. We don't want any configuration files sitting around. And then S removes all dependencies that were installed as a part of that package no longer needed by other packages. Mainly, we just wanna remove any residual things that might have showed up when you install the package. It is a big deal as this does happen. And this isn't the first time this has happened. Malware can get into the AUR. It's because it's community driven and largely unmoderated at submission time. So you might be asking how in the world did they catch this so quick? Because really this only existed for about two days before it got caught. That's because of the wonderful users that use the AUR, not just simply thinking that things are safe. They actually spend time looking through these packages and submissions. For example here, users on Reddit quickly called out within two days that VirusTotal is not happy about this file. Edit, I'm also starting to think the original poster is trying to spread the malware. That's right, the original poster was saying, oh no, everything's good, and that there was some sort of a weird thing going on with a false negative, but instead here, people continually called out that there was something wrong. A threat called Trojan Chaos, or also known as Chaos Rat. And sure enough, it did exist as the AUR team swiftly removed the user and the packages. And that lines up with a two a day ago timeline. And wildly enough, this post was actually removed by the moderators of Arch Linux as well. This person was caught and caught on many fronts. It's incredible that a bad actor like this would create a seemingly useful package some sort of a fix for browser code, which they know would affect lots of people because a lot of people wanna be on the bleeding edge of browser builds. And one way to get those is through the AUR if you aren't compiling them manually by yourself from source. So now how do we prevent malware from being downloaded? Well, it's hard, but there are a few things you can do. But first go down and subscribe below. You wouldn't wanna miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky. Also smash that like button on the way back up so more people are aware of this recent malware attack through the AUR. Anyways, this security alert on these AUR packages that contain malware can still be checked. There are a few things that you can do before installing any AUR package that might help you. One is to review the package build. So if you're using Paru, for example, you would do Paru dash S, the package name, and finally dash dash review. This allows you to check the package build and any install files inside of it. Also any source scripts that need to be used and big red flags are going to be things like curl, pipe to bash, or wget piped over to sh or the shell, obfuscated strings, so bash64, commands like nc, bash, chmod, remove, all those types of commands can be considered red flags. Now, sometimes they have to be used, but it's just something to take a deeper look at. Other things is you can just look at the packages and avoid the ones with risk fact, including low number of votes, or uploaded with no comments, or from packages that just got adopted all of a sudden. Those are things to definitely stay away from. Another way to really make sure that you're safe is use containers or sandboxing methods, including virtual environments, Docker containers, or non-root accounts to install your packages. This just provides one more layer of abstraction that a user has to get to, to in order to get to sensitive information or elevated privileges. And then of course, you can always verify URLs and checksums. Make sure that they're only pointing to official or known domains like GitHub or SourceForge. Even in this though, it was pointing to GitHub. It was just pulling a script from GitHub that would then do the malicious work. So that's hard, but do not skip checking checksums. As this is in the package build, and is your primary protection against supply chain attacks. This is where an attacker changes the upstream file. And again, you can look at that through the dash dash review and look for a SHA-256 sums line, which should tell you the SHAs. If you see skip inside of it, ask yourself, is the source a Git repo, a dynamic archive that changes often? And also is the package binary coming from a secure HTTPS source? And then is there any comment or rationale explaining why the SHAs do not show up? These are all ways to audit and check to make sure that you're not getting malware. Although it's a little hard to prevent it all, as we're gonna see in 2018, we also had a similar incident that actually affected a lot of Linux users. This is from Hacker News back in the day, 2018, Arch Linux AUR repository found to contain malware. And yes, packages in the AUR were compromised. But before we discuss this compromise, let's talk about leveling up your Linux experience today by downloading my Linux checklist, cheat sheet, mind map, and now new flashcards. Download them today at SavvyNick.com. So there was a few packages that were compromised, including AcroRead, 
which is the one we're going to focus on, but also two more things called BALZ and minor gate. These were all introduced by a user called XE Actor, and the malicious code contained execution for an arbitrary shell script from a remote URL and could fully compromise the system when the package was built. Again, it was quickly removed and the maintainer was banned, just like the maintainer was banned with this latest attempt. But honestly, a lot of these are just crypto miners. They want to run executables in the background that mine. So they install hidden processes to install these hooks and create obfuscated code to run the script. You can imagine that there are many other incidents in the AUR that probably aren't even caught. And Acro Read is just the Adobe Reader, the PDF reader for Linux that's proprietary and is no longer officially maintained by Adobe. And it's been removed from the AUR in 2018 because of the malware incident. So this is fairly popular for users who wanted to use Adobe's PDF engine in order to read PDFs or work with them on Linux systems. Here's what messages look like back and forth when it was officially found on AUR General. Hi all. The AcroRead AUR package appears to be compromised. Look at this report, and in particular, the curl pipe to bash line. Again, look for things like this with curl, wget, so on and so forth. Anything that can pull down script or pull down data from the internet and then pipe it or push it to something that can run commands. It's not a good thing. Not exactly sure who to contact, but I assume someone on the list can get this sorted out. Cheers, Quentz, and thank you, Quentz, for finding this and reporting it right away. We move on to a response. Very quickly, the count was suspended, commits reverted, and the trusted user privileges taken away. Thanks, Eli. And in response to, looks to me like it was more of a warning than anything else. No, why would he create the files otherwise given how much attention that this would attract? Hi, Bennett. This would be a warning for what exactly? The orphan packages can be adopted by anyone. That we have a big bold disclaimer on the front of the page of the AUR clearly stating that you should use any content at your own risk. This thread is attracting way more attention than warranted. I'm surprised that this type of silly package takeover and malware introduction doesn't happen more often. This is why we insist users to always download the package built from the AUR, inspect it, and build it themselves. Helpers that do everything automatically and users that don't pay attention will have issues. You should use helpers even more so at your own risk than the AUR itself. And that really leads us back to the main incident. As on July 2018, just like July 16th of 2025, a malicious user took a trusted package that many users recognized and quietly added malicious code to its package build, much like we see here. Is it the same actor? We don't know. But what we do know is that they modified the package build and the attacker added a comment or a line that would pull malicious code by silently downloading a remote script, piping it to bash to execute it without user interaction, and then creating a cron job that loop and fetch the additional code every few minutes. The malware could send system hardware information, download and execute arbitrary commands, and run in the background even after rebooting. Although the community was fast to notice this unusual behavior, and in this case, actually scan through and find a remote access Trojan, both actors were swiftly banned from the AUR. And key things to take away from all of this is that orphan packages in the AUR can be adopted by anyone. That opens the door to things like trust hijacking, where you trust the package, but the user behind the package after it's been orphaned should not be trusted. That too, you should always inspect your package builds before installing. Don't trust any names you don't recognize. Avoid anything that uses commands like curl or wget or, or even cloning as the AUR is powerful, but it also needs informed use. It does not keep you away from malware, but it's a great place to get those packages that you just can't access on the official repos. So when is the next chaos rat going to show up? More than likely it is in another package and we have no idea as these attacks are definitely targeted against trust and then automating the package builds. It really matters to the AUR as power users and developers and regular users want to stay on top of the bleeding edge niche and proprietary software that's not available in the official repos. That's why they turn to the Arch user repositories. It takes thousands of contributors to maintain and update these packages and more come through than people available to look at them. This is one of the most severe malware attacks that we've seen with the AUR in quite a while. It shows that the AUR is not immune to these attacks and just reinforces the fact that we need 
to stay aware of what packages we are downloading and from whom. Every AUR user should understand that the packages are not vetted or signed by Arch Linux maintainers. Anyone can upload or modify these packages, including attackers. And if you don't take anything else away, just take the fact that you should always inspect your package build and install scripts before building. If you don't understand what's in it, do not install it. The AUR is a cornerstone piece of Arch Linux. Even though it's open source, trust can be a vulnerability itself. This was quite an interesting one. Let me know if you've used the AUR in the past and how you've kept yourself safe in the comments section below. You've made it to the end of the video, so take a moment to subscribe below and smash that like button for me. You're a true fan. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.